our Launch America coverage is counting down to Wednesday's historic liftoff of a SpaceX rocket. It will carry astronauts into space from U.S. soil for the first time since 2011. NASA astronauts Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley arrived at the Kennedy Space Center last week, and they will launch aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule. When they reach the International Space Station, they'll meet astronaut Chris Cassidy, who has been in command of the ISS since last month. We spoke with Cassidy about his role in this mission. All right, Commander Chris Cassidy, we're on the brink of a major milestone in spaceflight. In the history of spaceflight up until right now, only countries have put a capsule into orbit and then brought it back. And now we could have a company do it, SpaceX, with two of your colleagues, two American astronauts on board. How big of a deal is this mission? Oh, it's a gigantic deal. I mean, when we, we retired the shuttle uh, for very sound reasons when that decision was made with aims to move towards the future. And now the future is here. One of the questions when NASA teamed up with commercial companies to try to do something like this was, how will the culture of safety at NASA match up with the corporate ambition of a company like SpaceX? So how confident are you that as your friends get into that capsule, they're going to arrive there safely? Oh, I'm very confident. There's smart engineers at NASA, there's smart engineers at SpaceX, all with motivation to do the same thing, and that's fly missions effectively and safely. I think it's been healthy for both uh, the commercial guys who faster, faster and, and cheaper, and NASA with a more uh, decades based of safety culture. I think it's been healthy for the growth of both organizations. Are you worried ab about coronavirus as these additional astronauts arrive? Well, certainly we're worried about it. We've, we're, we have confidence in that the testing and the program and the regime that, that the medical folks are, are putting Bob and Doug through and the protections that they have will mitigate that as low of a, of a probability as we can. I, I was joking around with my colleague, my crewmates last night and said, hey, maybe we should have them come in through the hatch and, and make a, a hard left and we'll isolate them here in the corner for a couple weeks before we'll, we'll treat them to a meal. <laughs> I was hoping you could give us some perspective on what it's been like to be up there knowing that so much sorrow uh, is going on below with the pandemic, tens of thousands of people in the U.S. alone dying in the weeks that you've been on this mission. Just what's it like with the wonder of what you're doing and the tragedy of what's going on below? I have watched news segments and you see those numbers that I think everybody's watching and it dawned on me a week ago that every single one of those numbers is a story. It's a family, it's a life, and that was impactful to me, uh, particularly as I was looking out the window thinking about it. Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, has said that he hopes that we as a species, humans, will become multi-planetary, will be able to get off of this planet. The pandemic certainly puts that in perspective, and I'm curious, do you share that goal or that hope? Do you hope that humanity may throw off the bonds of Earth itself? Oh, absolutely. And I think it's definitely going to happen. It's just a matter of what the time scale is. Maybe it's in 100 years, but it's just been a little over 100 years since the Wright brothers flew. And think of where we are now, me talking to you from the space station. So that's quite incredible. And I'll end that thought with when I first became an astronaut in 2004, John Young, a famous uh, astronaut, was still in the office. And I remember him saying, single planet species don't survive. So that has stuck with me all these years. I understand you have uh, an American flag there left by the last Americans who came from U.S. soil. W where is it? What's the plan for, for passing that flag on? It's around the corner about 40 yards away from me hanging in the U.S. laboratory. And Doug Hurley was a member of that last shuttle flight to bring the flag up here. Doug Hurley is also, uh, uh, as you know, on this SpaceX flight, and he'll bring that flag home. So he's an integral part of this uh, capture the flag, so to speak. So it's, it's had... Uh, quite a bit of space flight experience this flag has. All right, well, we wish everybody luck, and I have to say, Commander Cassidy, as I say goodbye, as a Florida boy who grew up watching the space shuttle and the space program, it is truly an honor to talk to you. I enjoyed my time. I, uh, all the best to you guys at CBS. Cassidy is a class act there. This is, uh, he's a former Navy SEAL. This yeah. is his third trip to space. He's scheduled to return uh, on a Russian vessel in October, but there's a lot to do before that. I love so much about this story and about this moment, Gail. Uh, and one of the things that I think is, is particularly noteworthy is 
This is a program that began under the Obama administration, this, this public-private partnership, NASA and SpaceX. And now President Trump is going to go down and, and see it off. So at a time when there's so much fighting and dysfunction in government, this is a, a moment of continuity that I think is very special. I think we can all agree we want this to go well, regardless of whatever your political party is. But, Tony, I really like Chris Cassidy. He was so relaxed and so confident and so welcoming and warm. I thought he was very special. That was a great interview. I love that conversation. I got a nice note from him afterwards as well. He is a class act all oh, the way, wow. and he'll be there right, yeah. waiting to open the door for his colleagues on Wednesday. All right. And uh, speaking of Wednesday, our Launch America coverage will continue throughout this week. Tomorrow, we're going to look at some of the incredible accomplishments and notable failures. There have been those as well in SpaceX's history. Then on Wednesday afternoon, we're going to join Nora O'Donnell for complete coverage of this historic, historic launch.